moving west, you know, everyone wants a new life, right? Immigrants, uh, Americans, everyone's trying to better themselves. Well, let's start with the guy with the last name of Carnegie, okay? Now, just to show a hand, has anyone heard of Andrew Carnegie before? Why your hand up first? Uh, what can you tell me about it? It's anything. Okay, so you know he's a famous person in American history. Does anyone know what he was famous for? How he got his millions? No? Perfect. Well, I'll tell you. All right. Andrew Carnegie revolutionized the steel industry by starting many new business practices. Okay, so you guys think steel, right? What did he use it on? How did he make so much money off steel? Well, remember we were talking about the railroad? Right? And the railroads were made of iron. Right, TJ? Okay, so now they're being replaced with steel. Okay, because steel is stronger, it's lighter, it lasts longer. Okay, so Carnegie saw this as an opportunity to come to America in 2000, by the way. He saw this as an opportunity to come to America and invest in the steel business. All right, now first, steel was took too long to make and it was too expensive. Okay, so something called the Bessemer process is how steel all of a sudden became affordable. You know, they just basically make, put carbon in iron and ran some air through it while molten it up on fire. Okay, I'm not, you guys don't need to know that, the whole entire process. But all, all of a sudden, the steel became cheap and easy to make. Okay, so he could sell it in large quantities. That's how he made his money. That's why he came here from Chicago. All right. Uh, he searched for ways to make better products more cheaply. He used an accounting system to track expenses. You know, now that his corporation grows and grows, you need to start keeping logs of your employees, you know, you have to have an organizational strategy. You can't just be people show up to work and leave. All right? And then you got the quality workers by offering stocks and benefits. All right? This is important because, you know, back then, in those days, there weren't as many educated people, right? So Carnegie stopped to find people who were educated. All right? He didn't just take labor. You know, he needed people to still manage his position. He needed someone with some education to be able to do that. All right? So he started building this corporation from the ground up and took in educated people. So now he has a solid foundation and a solid core for his business to excel. All right, brings us to our next man, Mr. John Rockefeller. Show of hands, anyone ever heard that name? Ever? You know anything about it? No, I just don't remember the name. You heard the name? I'm sure a lot of you heard the name. Okay, remember Andrew Carnegie, he did it with steel, right? John Rockefeller, Standard Oil. Have you guys ever heard of Chevron? Where do you think he came from? Right here. Wasn't that funny how long ago? So how powerful this man was to them? Right? They still have a offshoot of a company that still exists to this very day. Right? So, he used similar techniques to Carnegie. Alright, I'm going to get into those right now. Alright. I'm sure you guys might have heard of the board game Monopoly. TJ, listen up please. Okay? I'm sure you guys have heard of the board game Monopoly, right? Okay. Does anyone here know what the term Monopoly means when it's talking about companies? Go ahead. Like to take over the whole system and own everything? Yes, you are 100% correct. Thank you, John. Yes. Guys, Monopoly is a key word from this, all right? You're not to know what this means. All right, Monopoly. So, I'll give you an example on how they did it, how they took control of everything. John Rockefeller, for example. All right, let's say you have four gas stations next to each other. John Rockefeller owns three of them, and the other gas station is not part of his corporation, all right? He's an Argo, let's say. Okay, well, let's say that guy is selling his gas for three bucks a gallon, and Rockefeller is selling his three gas stations for cheaper. The other gas station cannot sell it for cheaper, so what happens to him after time goes by? Bankrupt, bingo, yes he eventually would go out of business. Now, the way John Rockefeller could do this is because he, he had so much oil that the railroads and shipping the oil, they'll give him a discount on shipping the oil. And in return, Rockefeller sells the oil to the railroads for cheaper. So they're both lowering prices to help them, which allows Rockefeller to sell oil for cheaper. So, this poor little Arco station, right? He about to go out of business. John Rockefeller walks across the street and he says, sorry, you're about to go out of business, maybe I can help you out. How about I just buy your company and cut your losses? And the guy has no choice most of the time, right? So what just happened? Now John Rockefeller owns all four gas stations, but like Connor said, he has a what? He has a monopoly, right? He did that little by little and eventually got control of 90% of the oil industry. As it says right here, he went from two 
1870. By 1890, 20 years later, he owned almost every single oil rig in the United States. <coughs> Pretty insane, right? Especially compared to nowadays. He owns these trust agreements. A trust is basically other companies put their trust in him. All right? You know, they get molded. Like, they still have a company. He didn't buy a mask for them. But they just kind of put their trust for their company in John Rockefeller's hands. Okay? And they kind of didn't really have a choice because they would have went under anyway. So that just gives Rockefeller more puppets to play with. Does that make sense? They do his bidding and listen to him. He basically owns it. Okay? That's just a fancy way of saying it. It's a trust company and everything. All right, good, good. Uh, okay. So, this brings us to how the monopoly started. All right? Carnegie uses integration, vertical integration. Okay? He used, basically, he wanted to control every aspect of the process, okay? I'll let you guys write down, fill the blanks real quick, and then I'll go over it. 